Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I am back with a third and final attempt to investigate asymmetric heat and how that might affect yarn that you are trying to dye. In this project, I will be setting up a full-size catering steam pan across two burners, but I'm only going to keep one burner on. And I think that in the last fail, in addition to when I tried this with a tonal, we have learned a lot. And trying to add some liquid dye in strips might show us something more conclusive. And I say might because, well, it might not. So let's go get into it. Before we start dyeing our yarn, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's Dye Pot Weekly lab partner, Belle. Belle, thank you so much for being my lab partner today, and I really hope you love the way that the yarn turns out. For more information about how you can become a lab partner, get some yarn dyed in the videos and shout outs, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Today, we are going to dye 200 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK yarn. This yarn is 100% superwash merino, and I have pre soaked it in some plain tap water with no vinegar for about half an hour. Here is my full size, four inch deep catering steam pan, and it's going to be on two burners on my stove. The large burner up here I will have on low, and so we will have heat. A lot of heat down here, a little bit of heat here, and eventually the yarn down here will get heat, but it will stay cool a lot longer. So my plan is to add the yarn, water, and acid into the pan, start heating things up until the water down here feels warm, then I'm going to add some dye in strips across the yarn, and we'll watch what happens. I am going to add one one tablespoon of vinegar and about four cups of water here into the pan. I removed a lot of liquid from the yarn, but I'm bringing it in and I'm gonna lay it out. Just, I wanted to see, yes, I am gonna increase the water level. Here is another four cups of water with one tablespoon of white vinegar. So now we have added eight cups of water and two tablespoons of white vinegar. And so I'm curious how quickly the colors might strike and might spread. And we may not see much of a difference, but given that this is the third time we're trying it, if we don't see a big difference, then maybe there isn't a big difference. In general, heat makes colors strike to yarn faster. But if we're dealing with dry powder, yes, on one hand, the heat can help the speckles like dissolve and strike faster. But on the other hand, the heat also helps the dye dissolve faster, not just strike. So depending on the situation, if the dye dissolves faster, maybe it spreads more before it strikes, I don't know. I could rationalize things both ways. In general, for really sharp speckles, you want really low water and for the yarn to be hot. So that way there isn't really an opportunity for the dye to spread. It'll hit the yarn and strike. So what I have set up would be a little too much water for getting some really sharp speckles, but that's also why we're not trying speckles. We're going to try um, adding some liquid dye, but a color that we know breaks. I considered using purple pop that breaks really dramatically, but I decided to go with radioactive. It also breaks, but maybe not quite as extreme always as purple pop, so I thought that this would be a really good candidate. Now I'm going to turn on this burner, and I you saw that it was pretty large. I have it on sort of a medium heat. It should start steaming pretty quickly down here. I'm going to wait about, I think, two minutes. I'm going to wait two minutes and then we'll start applying the dye. Or at least I'll check it before we do that. So after two minutes, there's some weird like warm and cool patches over here. The yarn down at that end is still completely cool. So I'm going to give it another uh, two minutes so that way the heat can move around here a tiny bit more. Right, there's still one minute left on the timer, and it is still a little cool down here at this edge. So I am 
just wiggling this area around to give us some more heat down here. It is warm but not hot and the other end is still cool. The balance here is that I want this edge to be hot and I want that edge to not be hot yet when I add the dye. So let's go for it. Now I'm going to start at the middle and I am just going to do a, some, a series of lines with this 1% stock solution of radioactive. And I'm going to do this in the warm area and down in the cool area. There will be some differences in the way that the colors move around. Some areas have more water, but we will see what we see. Now my hypothesis is that in the areas with more heat, we will see more of a yellow spread and maybe we'll see the green spread more down there. But I am not 100% sure how this will go down. Some colors do start to strike even with acid. And so I'm going to reduce the heat over here to low. And what I can say right now, and you can barely see it on screen, there does seem to be a demarcation here in that these look more grass green and those still look a little bit more, uh, a little bit more yellow, a little bit more mossy is what I'm seeing right now. And where, so that's hot. I don't want to move things too much. So that's hot there. What about right here? Okay, that is still, maybe it's a hint warm, but that's still pretty cold. So, yeah, I don't know if we're going to see a ton uh, of stuff happen, but you definitely can see the breaking, and I'm going to come and zoom you in. Okay, so here's the hot edge, and the color, oop, we're getting steamy. So here's the hot edge. The color looks very bright green. And do you see where all of a sudden it switches over here to be a little less bright? That's when we're going into the cooler section. And this isn't from the dye stock itself necessarily, that difference that we're seeing right now. It is more that, um, because I, I sort of alternated where I placed the lines, that probably is due to the heat. But whether or not things will look vastly different in say 20 minutes, I don't know. We absolutely know that heat can make a difference when it comes to dyeing yarn in the way that the colors strike, how they spread. Today, we're really just curious how much of a difference it can make when we have such asymmetric heat in here with a heat source here and none down there. Now, I honestly am not sure if we're gonna see a huge difference in the end, but we will certainly check back in in about 20 minutes. A lot of times when I'm heating, there probably are some pockets of hot and cold, but not enough that I've necessarily noticed it make a huge difference within the pot, and I'm not good about shaking the pans to try to distribute that heat evenly. So, yeah, we'll just see uh, what we see right now. And I will touch it in, one, in 20 minutes so we can see how much um, things may have shifted or we'll figure out if it's warmer down there. It's been 20 minutes and pulling this pan out of the shadow a little bit, it doesn't look vastly different. Let me check the temperature down at the other end. Okay, this is still cool. And the reason why I guess that is because it's still, like, these look brighter, more neon, and this still doesn't. So it is still cool. The pan, okay, I'm feeling warmth here. So I would say that down here is pretty hot, and down there is cooler. Let's go ahead and add some more dye. I think that the results that we're seeing right now are pretty subtle because I think that some of this color uh, is striking pretty quickly with the amount of acid that we have here. So those blues are striking pretty quickly. I'm not going to add 
And I guess let's go in between every stripe, approximately. And just see what we can see in about five minutes. All right, let's see. So here, it's still pretty cool. Here and here, it's a bit warm. So it's not making a huge difference. I could have had less acid, then maybe we would see some things spread more. One difference that maybe I see, and it's a little unclear if it has to do with the heat, the blue may be sharper with the heat and it might, some of the lines might be a little more blown out where we didn't have heat yet, but it is really subtle, really, really subtle. Okay, I'm going to flip this now um, and we will see if we see anything from the other side. Unclear? Unclear. Um, yeah, I don't have anything hugely conclusive about this. Uh, clearly heat can make a difference with some techniques. I'm going to turn on the rear heat now. Clearly there's some techniques where heat might make a huge difference. But in terms of the asymmetry that we see in a pan, it can make a really, really big difference. Uh, you can make a huge difference, but I think that what will make a bigger difference is the overall technique that you're doing with. And really, it makes it seem like the amount of acid that you have makes a huge difference. I mean, we have seen with this yarn base, and I don't know if the video has come out yet, but you can have a similar concentration of acid and the yarn will soak up all of that dye without any heat being applied pretty quickly, within minutes at times. So there could still be some circumstances where we might see a bigger difference, maybe with some other speckling based techniques. I am going to let the yarn sit in the pan for about five minutes, then we will flip, add more dye, flip, add more dye, waiting about five minutes in between to go ahead and finish up this fun yarn that we have created. I do not consider this experiment a fail. I think that this is as uh, conclusive as something that we could have looked at with this asymmetry. But there are other asymmetric experiments we could look at and we could try just adding acid to one end because I have a feeling that that acid will make a bigger, bigger impact than the heat. I do have to say I'm surprised. I thought that the heat was gonna make a bigger difference and that we would see more spread. But I think that some factors that make a bigger difference on the rate that the colors absorb seem to be the amount of acid and whether or not the yarn is superwash. In one pan, you can see with this technique that I did just now, how some superwash yarns, the yarn will strike quick in a thin line and that the colors will spread out more on a non superwash yarn. So in terms of all the things that can affect the rates, heat might not make as big of a difference as I really thought. So I think that that is really, really cool. It definitely still can make a difference, but the acid seems to play a really, really important part. Hmm. We have a lot to think about and a lot to explore in the future. Anyway, I'm going to turn off the heat on the stovetop, let the yarn cool completely, so then we can wash it. Let's wash our fun neon yarn. You can see the breaking. It's almost like we have a highlighter yellow, but the yellow that we have there is a hair more green than just the true highlighter yellow. And I don't see any bleeding. Uh, I do want to add some soap. Just some dish soap to our yarn. So while we don't have like firm conclusions or something from our asymmetric heat, 
Like I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, we've dyed it all over, so it'd be hard to say now um, what anything is. But since there's no bleeding, I'm gonna rinse out the soap, put the yarn through my skin dryer, and hang it up to dry. This yarn is beautiful. We have a bright yellowish highlighter, yellow green color with some deeper green speckles randomly placed all along it. Speckles or splotches, they're pretty large, but this will be, this will turn into something really, really fun. Since we ended up adding color all over, all over the yarn, this doesn't exactly give, show us the conclusions we got from our asymmetric heat, but it really does seem to me now that I can hypothesize that vinegar makes a bigger difference than heat. So if we were to try something like this with asymmetric acid, maybe we only add acid on one side of the pan, and maybe we'll see something else happen. But I think one other uh, variable that is important to consider is the amount of water in the pan. If we add yarn to the pan fairly low immersion, there's a limit to how far colors can spread. And to an extent, it depends on how fast they're striking, like some of the differences we see on superwash versus non-superwash. But I also see colors start to strike to yarn with no heat. So that can make it harder to determine a conclusion beyond that I think that the acid makes a bigger difference. Would you enjoy seeing me do some asymmetric acid exploration? Uh, a lot of times when I add acid, it is fairly asymmetric. I don't always mix things up, but I'm also not sure how long it takes for acid that I add at one pan end of a steam pan to go all the way to the other. So if this is something you want me to explore, please let me know down in the comments below. Belle, thank you so much for being my lab partner today. I think that the yarn is electric and fun and I really, really hope that you love it. There are two different ways that you can become a lab partner of a Dye Pot Weekly video. One is through signing up through the Dye Pot Weekly lab partner listing on Etsy, which is often sold out, but you can message me on Etsy if you'd like to be on a waiting list. The second is through the last minute lab partner listing, where you can go and pick from some videos that I've already started filming for me to then film some last minute shout outs to you in the editing process. There's details about all of this in the video description and feel free to reach out to me um, through Etsy Messenger if you are confused and like to learn more. So Belle, thank you so, so much for being my lab partner today. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and please make sure that you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. Sometimes YouTube randomly unsubscribes people, so if you've been subscribed, just double check that you still are, and while you're at it, press that bell icon so you can be notified every time I release a new video. I publish videos every Tuesday and Friday morning, 52 weeks a year, and we have so much fun. And sometimes there's special series and spontaneous live streams along the way, and you really don't want to miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching. But in general, for really sharp speckles, you want really low water. <laughs>